The podcast you're about to hear involves true stories, which may contain graphic content that is not suitable for children. Listener's discretion is advised. This is Esoteric Oddities. Hey, guys and ghouls. Ooh. Wow, that was really corny. Um, it's your favorite spooktacular podcast. podcast. So um, we are coming to you live from um, Literally North the, Philadelphia. The floor. Yeah, and we're sitting on my floor. If you hear my cat meow, he's just saying hi. So, guys, we are trying out <laughs> something um, different for the month of, of October. October. Spooktober. Ooh, and I feel like this is probably most of y'all's favorite month as it is mine, even though I'm cursed on Halloween and uh Okay, I've been cursed this whole year. Two thousand eighteen has been a curse for me. Don't try to out curse me. I'm cursed on I'm Halloween. Sorry. <laughs> Let me have this. Don't out curse me. Moment. Oh, look at Charlie. Cute Charlie. <laughs> um so for for the whole month of October, we've got five weeks coming at ya. Five weeks. One, two, three, four, five. Count, Count them. Up. And uh we are gonna have a new guest on every episode. And um, some people you might know, some people we may have talked about too much. Uh, and Tune in to figure it out. They are going to tell us their personal paranormal slash ghost slash UFO stories. So um, I'm excited. We are also, uh, you guys have probably seen, we posted on the Instagram and on Twitter that we're, you know, accepting email, well, as, as we always are, but if you guys want to email us your personal stories for us to read on the podcast, we've actually got a couple emails here that we're going to be reading today. Yes, email us. I want to hear your stories. Put that on silent. Sorry, that's my telephono. Uh, but before we jump in to the spooky goblins and ghostly creatures and the, the monster living under your bed, can we just talk oh, about... Uh, so I'm still kind of drunk from last night. <laughs> I was part... I participated in my cousin's wedding. I know... Jonathan uh, is too busy being cool. I I got to read from a Bible. It was very cool. But it was awesome to be <laughs> a part burn? of it. Did you burn? I, I would have burned. It's my second one this year. And oh, I, love I that. didn't Cheers. fuck it up. So, oh yeah, we should clink to that. Just, just a side note: if you guys are going to a wedding or or some, this is just a, a PSA, and I literally have no room to to be preaching this word, but I'm gonna fucking do it because it's kind of annoying to me. So, P, those who have been, you've been to a wedding, correct? Only one. Okay, so you know the wedding reception is y- you. You get an RSVP. You okay. RSVP and you get, sometimes you're granted a plus one. And there's reason for that. And that's because the bride and the groom and the families involved have to pay for the venue and they have to pay for the head count and they have to pay for the meals and shit, you know? Right, so right, right. when people come out of the woodwork, you send in your RSVPs and then people come out of the woodwork the night before saying, like, I want to be invited. Can I bring my three kids? No. D- as much as it doesn't sound like an inconvenience, your kid is taking up a place at a table. Your kid is going to need to be fed, and all that shit has probably already been paid for. Right. So, and, and it's probably like fifty a plate. Certain people who were calling this, they were married, and they've like done this shit. So y'all should fucking know. Mm-hmm, so just be mm-hmm. goddamn courteous for those who are, you know, wedding planning is already stressful enough without having people come out of the woodwork being like, "Can I bring my four children?" Oh, and here's the kicker. Uh, they got the answer no like unfortunately no i'm oh, sorry shit. brought the they kids anyway it. i knew it brought the kids anyway did they eat i don't know yikes i don't fucking know uh but the wedding was great uh that's amazing frankie who i know listen to this hey frankie he's, hey frankie he's now my new cousin uh he, oh hey new cousin he comes from an italian family and i think his mom made these fettuccine frankie yes fettuccine frankie <laughs> uh Portobello. That's un mi spaghetti. Uh, they're always after me. Un spaghetti. Uh, so I think his mom made these Jordan almonds, and everyone at my table. I love ta- Jordan almonds. No one at my table wanted their Jordan almonds. I fucking, 
I I got away like a Why goddamn you bring robber. Them to me. I actually might have some in my bag. I have like six bags of Jordan almonds, <gasps> and your cat's literally eating them in my bag right now. Oh my god, do you really have them? In I, I don't know if they're in there, but there's definitely batteries. Surely. I think he'll be fine. If if they're in there, they're in a bag. But uh, yeah, Jordan almonds. He loves almonds. that bag. He always goes in it. He loves that. Fucking I bag. love Jordan almonds. Me too. I just like Jordan al- munchies, like Jordan it. almonds and cherry cordials. Oh. If you have Jordan almonds and cherry cordials, I will cordially pop this cherry for you. If I you knew catch you were gonna say that. When I'm bust them throwing open. A, out there, bust it. <laughs> All right, so uh, <laughs> let's get let's get spooky. No, not okay. okay. No, 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 not yet. No, because I okay. have a story. Oh shit. Okay, so I was taking a nap. I think it was on Friday because I was off. Is this a spooky story? Yeah. Okay, so we are getting spooky. I was okay. taking a nap, and I told I told you the story because I literally couldn't keep it in. I was taking a nap and like I think I was like a fart in an elevator. Exactly. I think I was like um, lucid dreaming or something because I like tried to get up, but I couldn't. And I heard that's not lucid. That would oh, be um, sleep paralysis. Yes. Okay. I always get them confused. That's okay. Don't let it happen again. But oh, okay. Okay. Anyway, suck my dick. I heard footsteps. Right next to where we're recording right now? Yeah, like okay, outside. Okay, perfect. And I was like, there's someone here. But I was like, I knew my roommate was at work and my girlfriend was in here. So I was like, I hear footsteps like, and they seem so real. And when I was able, like finally able to get up, there was like nothing there. How long were you like paralyzed for? I think about like five minutes. But I was dreaming that I was in a porn. <laughs> Wait, like while while this was happening, or you woke up from that dream? I woke and this, up from okay. that dream, and I was experiencing this. And then in my, because in my head, I could like hear myself being like, "I'm hearing footsteps, but I don't see anything." You could, yeah, because it probably was some sort of sleep paralysis. Yeah. I don't know if there's like levels to that shit, probably. but you know, sleep paralysis usually happens. I'm no scientist, but a, a bitch reads a Wikipedia article, okay? So. You know, you get sleep paralysis when you can't fall in slash out of your REM cycle properly. So naps, you know, that's your body's not used to falling asleep at that time. Uh, That's why also like if you are awake for a long amount of time and then or like uh, say you wake up in the morning at like four o'clock and you're up from four to five and then you fall back asleep at six. You're more likely to have sleep paralysis because you probably won't fall back into that full REM cycle. Dude, sleep paralysis is fucking crazy because you have sleep to think. Sleep is crazy. Sleep is crazy. Let me recharge my batteries. Right, exactly. <laughs> but I had sleep paralysis once. Ew, one time, that's it? It was when I used to drive um, someone to work every morning, like hella fucking early. And then I would come home and I would go back to sleep and then I would wake up and go to classes. Oh my God, that probably I would have to drive all up. the way to Center City yeah. in a big ass truck, mind you. And then I would park in our neighbor's fucking like lot. Love that. Uh, they don't really care in North Philly what you do. Fifi on the block, y'all. Hey. Uh, and I forgot about that song. I was awake for that amount of time. I came back. I guess I was scrolling on Instagram or whatever. And then I fell asleep. And then I woke up and I remember I heard... Um, I think you were upstairs watching American Dad. Is that something you would watch? I remember specifically American Dad. Not me. It might have been str- maybe it was on a computer or something cuz I heard the theme song playing and I was like I don't know why I remember that, but I do. And then I opened my eyes and something told me like I understood that I was about to have sleep paralysis before it happened. Oh, but that's good. I was like I was like okay, it's, it's about, about to happen, to happen. Yeah. and I and I fully understand like what's going on. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. So I try to move my legs, can't move them. And I'm like, okay, fuck, it's happening. Stay calm. Oh my God, no. Try to wiggle my fingers. Can't do it. Right. I try to like say something. Can't. Can't murmur. So I start trying to scream and I hear it coming out of my throat like a... (laughs) And I'm like, holy fuck. I can't scream. This is as terrifying as everybody says it is. And yeah, here I lay uh, trapped in in this body of mine. In this fucking nightmare. Yeah. And that was when the shadow man used to live in our basement. Maybe I should tell that fucking story. Yes. And I... um. I used to get sleep paralysis all the time. No, that's fucking terrifying. So people and I would always see shit. Yeah, and I don't know why. You know why the fuck I you always like see shit? I think it's like your brain, like it makes. Stuff. No, it's not fucking making shit that's up. Why true. is it? I think you're seeing into another dimension that's where true. these little predator things like see you and your weak state where you're crossing in between one dimension and the next. Oh, Y'all yeah, trying to dip into the. REM. You got tinfoil wow. downstairs. <sighs> You got I do. Oil? I definitely do. I upgraded, so you know I always got the condiments. 
Tin foil's not a condiment. And wraps and stuff. Oh my god. You know? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, this really is the scariest podcast you've ever heard okay. in your damn lives. Uh, okay, so th- that's, uh, and there was nothing there, no. You, you've you been hearing footsteps in here, though. Yeah, but I can't figure out. If it's your neighbors or not. Yeah, because these houses are all like yeah, together and they're I, like fucking I agree. paper. I haven't been here when it's happened. But, um, yeah, it, it's hard to tell. But when it you... stopped. So, like, there was one time for a whole week we were hearing footsteps up and down, like, a st- like stairs. And then they don't happen anymore. That's so, weird like, because you're upstairs. So, it's not like you hear, you well, could hear people upstairs. All of these houses have third stories. Oh, so you're thinking it's someone on the other side of the wall walking like, up their stairs. Charlie. But, like. Wh- for the record, that was not a haunted footstep. That was a cat. <laughs> right. But for me, it's like it stopped. So like, why why haven't I heard footsteps anymore? I don't know. These houses are old. That's true. They are your, old. Your house is, I, well, my house is old too. My house I just found out is from the eighteen hundreds. I didn't know it was that old. Oh shit, that's amazing. Yeah, um, we should find out when your house was from. Let's do it. Betsy do, how Ross. Do we find out? Betsy Ross is from. Um, yeah. Philadelphia. Oh, I love that. You you knew? Tell me you knew that. Sure. Tell me you know who Betsy Ross is. Sarah Ann. How do I know who she is? I never knew where she was from, and I know that she made the American flag, so that's all I really need to know. How many stars are on the American flag? 50 for the states. How many stars were originally on the American flag? 25. (laughs) No, baby. 13. Yes, for what? 13 original colonies. Shout them, scout them, tell all about them. One by one, take them and my name to every state in the USA. No. And that concludes October. You guys will be back next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because as you can see, I'm losing my fucking mind. Same, but uh, let's let's uh, let's 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 jump into it. Let's get into uh, our first scary story here. So this was sent in from uh, Ray from New Jersey, and it is titled "My Creepiest Experience." Dot dot dot. By far. I want to start off by saying that I've had experiences all my life, ranging from corner of the eye scurries to full on shadow people. I've had a few psychic moments, but truly nothing that compares to this one experience. So if you like a nice long story, buckle up because this one's a doozy and I swear it's 100% true. It all starts with my mom joining a local ghost hunting group in South Jersey. She made friends with a woman and her husband, who joined the group because their house was haunted. To be straightforward, this family was fucking creepy. The wife had eyes like a dead fish that she passed on to her two really strange kids who had zero boundaries. Her 17-year-old son was especially weird and made me wildly uncomfortable the second I met him. So my mom goes to their house and backs their claims up, saying there's definitely something there. Three of my girlfriends and I are curious and decide we'll go over one night just to see what happens. Shit starts happening the literal second we get there. The minute I got out of the car, I felt something looking at us from the basement window. Oh no. But I thought maybe I was just amped on anticipation. When we walked into the house, the creepy son was staring at my girlfriends and I through this door with a yellow window leading to the kitchen. Girl, run. The fucking kid didn't say a damn word. He just stared at us so uncomfortably that one of the girls was close to refusing to go in and my mom had to call him out and kick him out of his own house. Once he goes, we decide to sit around the living room and chat a bit before taking a tour of the house. Within 10 minutes, there are some knocks on the walls. But since Creeper left, I'm not convinced it isn't him. But then... Little trinkets on her entertainment center start shaking a little bit. Kind of strange, but it wasn't enough to really freak me out. So that's when we decide to start the tour, leading with the basement. Mm -mm. Almost immediately, you can feel a change in the room's energy when you begin to walk down the stairs. The best way I can describe it is as thick, stale air. We're down there for a minute when my friend just starts to cry uncontrollably and can't explain why. She was so overcome with sadness, she had to go upstairs. It was at this point that my creepiest moment happened. 
It sounds crazy, but as people are talking, I feel something tightening around my neck. It is pulled so tightly that I let out an audible choking sound. And in that moment, I knew that someone had committed suicide by hanging. I can't explain how or why, but I just knew it. I could feel it, and my mom's friend had confirmed later that it was true. Now, I've just known things before, but I've never had a physical reaction to go along with it. But this was just a start of all kinds of shit for the night. We decide to go upstairs to the second floor, and another friend felt a pinch on her foot. Then, in the back room, we tried to recite our Lord's Prayer, but somehow everyone forgot. I'll be honest here, I'm kind of a heathen, and I couldn't recite it if my life depended on it, but my girlfriends were raised in a Catholic church and spent their time at CCD and could recite it backwards. Just kind of strange. Then, as we turn to leave, we hear a series of footsteps rush up right behind me. I'll admit, I totally screamed out loud for this one, and I can't decide if I'd rather go back downstairs. On the way down the steps, I felt what I would describe as a cobweb or long hair gently graze my forehead. I figured it was one of my own long hairs, just going rogue, when three people behind me felt the same thing. There was no cobwebs. We all felt the same soft touch. The stairs led into the kitchen, so we stopped to hear my mom's friend's stories when another friend and I saw a full shadow run down the stairs and pass us in the kitchen. It ran right through my shoulder. Oh my god, stop it. I felt that thing again, and that was about the moment where I had reached my limit. My shoulder just felt tingly and uncomfortable. I can't think of another way to describe it that really does the feeling justice. Almost like my body was bothered on a cellular level. Fucking creepy. We had all had enough at that point and decided it was time to head out. It was a pretty quiet drive home. After that night, I would wake up in the middle of the night for the remainder of the week feeling like something was staring at me. One of my girlfriends had an awful nightmare for a few nights after. Then my mom developed a serious heart issue. I don't know if I'm sold that these are connected, but my mom swears by it. Either way, I've had things like this happen before, but nothing that compared to this. Also, my interest in exploring haunted houses has subsided just a bit. I've told this story to a few people, and most don't believe me. If I didn't have my girlfriends and mom to back me up, I'd definitely question what happened that night. Damn, Ray. Wow, Ray. That's a lot. Yeah, that's some scary I would not be okay. shit. Right? Ugh. I wonder what happened to that. I wonder what, like, the history of that house is. Right, and I wonder... I feel like there's always, like, a lie behind Well, they did say that somebody committed suicide oh, in that, that house. But I wonder if something happened before that. Yeah, totally. And that just added to the darkness that right. was there. Okay. That's some creepy shit. But props to you to going and exploring it. But, girl... Right. But it's a good thing you stopped after that. Yeah, because... maybe do a sage cleanse or something like yeah. that. It's crazy because... The way she described, like, the basement having, like, stale air. Yeah, like, you, oh, I almost you could, know, like, yeah, I concrete know what walls. stale air tastes and like. And it's just, like, damp and, and creepy. Nasty. And it smells like a basement. Yeah. And it's, it's like, like, it can, wet. it's, yeah, it's cold, but it's still, like, really humid. Yeah. And it's just something is off and uncomfortable about it. Why are basements so creepy? And attics, too. Yeah. Well, Ray, thank you so much for uh, emailing us. And, Thanks for submitting. And if you guys would like uh, to submit, that's oddityspodcast at gmail.com. We look forward to reading your creepy stories and uh, and possibly reading them in an episode. Yes, send them. Spooky cauldron. Ooh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so corny. Our next story is the Vatican Inc. Ghost, posted by Reddit user Pastel underscore Yandir. Of course, we are given permission to share the story. Thanks for keeping it creepy. We really appreciate it. So um, let's just jump in. I had taken my first trip to Europe in the summer of 2017. It was fun, but I always felt on edge. There was so much history to the places I went. I was a little dizzy with it all. The first place we went to was Rome, Italy. It's a trip that still haunts me. We had arrived the night before, and my mother and her friend wished to go see the Vatican that day. 
My brother and cousin were as equally as excited as our mothers, but I was not. The Vatican was grand and wonderful. I wasn't bothered too much by the other visitors. I had a rather pleasant day. It was at night when we finally got back to our Airbnb right outside the Vatican wall, and we all hit the hay early. My cousin and aunt slept in one room while my mother, little brother, and I slept in another room. Since this was a new country, my mom had closed and locked our bedroom door before we bunkered down for the night. I don't remember falling asleep, but I had awoken in the dead of night since I needed to go use the bathroom, which is right outside the bedroom door. I sat up, rubbing my eyes, and then looked to the bedroom door. It was slightly ajar, which I found strange, until I saw what was crawling on the wall next to it. An oily, inky, black male figure with deformed arms and legs crawling slowly like a spider on the wall towards my mother. I do believe it wanted my mother at first, since she likes to brag about how she can see spirits, and she's always opening herself to these kinds of things. She's got mental issues and brags about weird things. It had another set of extra arms, and its head was down, facing the wall. I knew I wasn't dreaming, and it wasn't sleep paralysis, since I was sitting up anyway. It kept moving towards my mother until I let out a squeak of fear. That's when it looked at me. It had no face, but it did have eyes. They still scare me to this day. I don't know how to describe the eyes, but once it looked at me, it felt like I was burning. I immediately laid back down with my blanket over my face, having a panic attack. All was quiet in the room except for my erratic breathing. It felt like an hour went by. But then the mattress dipped like someone was sitting at the foot of the bed. I felt the thing crawl up towards me until I could make out the sound of breathing hovering just over my face from beyond the blanket. I couldn't take it anymore and let out a scream for my mother to wake up and turn on the lights while pushing myself to sit up. The lights went on and the figure was nowhere to be seen. Crying, I told my mother about it, who noticed the bedroom door was wide open this time. I stayed in my aunt's room for the rest of the trip, sandwiched between my aunt and cousin in one bed, since I was too scared to sleep in that room again. Sometimes at night, I'll think about it. I didn't know what it wanted from my family or why it was there, but I am still very sure that if I hadn't screamed out that something bad would have happened. And that is the story of the Vatican Inc. ghost. Well, Isn't that's that so fucking creepy? creepy. I read it and I was like, oh no. That's like my worst fear. I, That's so scary just to visualize that. But right. it's also so unsettling because I personally, and our guest today, has something to do with that story, uh, which you guys have actually heard before. But I have actually felt like, like I was sitting on a couch and I felt someone sit yes, next exactly. to me. It's just so crazy. Like some have so much power. I'm uh, I'm 100% damp and 400% uncomfortable. Thanks. Thank you for sharing that story with us, Reddit thank you, user. Yes, thank you to the Reddit user who allowed wow. me to share this. Wowzers. Uh, I love ghost stories, though. There's so many because there's so many. Fu- and that's why I also love the Internet these days. You could find anything. You can find anything. But also like those people who have had shit like this happen to them and you have like a group of friends and you may maybe this person like told them this shit like it's it's like almost unbelievable it's like it's hard for people to fathom who haven't been through it so it's like a nice little community where everybody can gather and be like hey maybe we're not as crazy as everyone says we are yeah maybe there's something here right and for the record i just want to say there there's something going on like there is I don't, I don't ever like chalk up paranormal sightings. Yeah, and I do. I'm ske- I'm a skeptic. Are you? I, oh, that's oh, really, mm, really. No, really... no, no, no. Let me explain myself. Oh. I am a skeptic. I'm maybe I'm not a skeptic. I'm skeptical. I'll okay. say. I'll say I'm skeptical because anybody can take any. That is true. In, and incident. And ju- well, no, 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 not just that. What I'm saying, say something happens to you, like. Not that this is what's going on, but let's just say those footsteps you're hearing are, let's say you jump to the conclusion of paranormal. Let's just say they are your neighbors. Like that's me being skeptical of being like, hey, let's see if there's something to explain here. But if it's not, I'm not going to say, no, it's definitely not a ghost. Do you know what I mean? Oh, um, yeah, I get it. 
So, and I think it's important for people because then, and I think it's also important for there to be skeptics to, right. um, well, there's also like the whole like imagination thing. So like, I get it. <laughs> there's that whole thing called imagination. imagination. Like who's that guy? You know? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I agree that like, you know, people's minds do play, play a part in this because I think when your brain cannot fat, how do I even say this? When yeah, fathom and like make stuff up. Yeah, when your brain can't understand what's going on, it will fill in the blanks without you even knowing. Mm-hmm. So maybe y- you see something and your brain is already like, I-, I know a figure that looks like that. It's a person, and then your brain is like filling in the the blank. Did you see of a Hereditary? Person. I didn't see it yet. I feel like such a shitty person. I, I want to like see if it I say so this, bad. It'll be like Don't a spoiler alert. Okay. No, I won't. Well, none of that. That's really important in that movie. The whole yeah. So I'm skeptical. I'm not a skeptic because I want. Okay. I want hundred. You know that shit's been going on in my house. I know. For, and I for know there's ever. something. There's something up. Yeah, for real. Um, there's just too many coincidences that I can't yeah, really seriously. explain for there to, to not be like be something. Yeah. yeah. Um, if this is your first time listening, hey, uh, Go I live. Tune into that. I live in a haunted house. I'll figure out the episode and I'll put it in the show notes. Um, I. I talked about it for like 45 minutes about the weird shit that's happened in my house that i can't really explain and there might also be a part uh technically three because wow. i filled you guys in but there might be some more weird shit that's been going on he, has, he doesn't tell me anything so like that i'll fill you in on well that was spooky but that was I, spooktacular but i think it's time we would like to introduce our special guest and good friend kiko, kiko l, l. Here with, with Kiko, Kiko L. L. Hey y'all, how you doing, Kiko? I'm good. How, you how are you? I'm, I'm good. a little hungover, so like it's I feel chill. that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm good. I'm happy to be here with you guys. That event last night was really dope. It was really great. Kiko had an event last night. Let's talk about what you do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I am a vintage stylist and I also resell vintage clothing. Nooks and crannies. Holla at me on How Instagram. So <laughs> on Instagram, it's K-N-O-O-K-S vintage. Love it. So on Instagram, everyone can find you there on Instagram, right? Yes, everyone can follow me on Instagram. I'm working on a website hey. currently, yes. so soon come. All right, but that's not all you do. No, so I also have a passion project called Afro Witch uh, that I started a few years ago, and that was primar- primarily uh, focused on um, spotlighting the underrepresented in witchcraft, which is a lot of the time people of color <laughs> um so um <laughs> what'd you say true that yeah. um but yeah so I started that because I just like found myself getting really into it and having a lot of questions but not relating to the people who like had stores in my town or right. just like whatever um because they would be predominantly white but so I started that and it kind of took off from there <laughs> It, but it's open to all. Right. And, and like anyone can follow and contribute and like have conversations. Right. But I but I, I love that. I love that you're doing that. And I think it's a solid like besides it being a passion project for you, it's a solid like resource. Yeah. Right. For people who like don't really know anything about it or like what's going on. I mean, I guess now kids when it, when we were younger, it was like you had to go to a library or like oh my, yeah, now you a yeah. store. Instagram. Yeah. But it's still like a platform for people, mm-hmm. which is really, really nice. And it's even a platform for you. Yeah. It's really great because I never really, um, I don't know. I guess I just felt like I didn't really have a place in witchcraft yeah. because I didn't know like my ancestry behind it as well as just like, you know, having the resources right then and there. Um and all- so it's nice for me to be able to like right. express myself. Yeah, I love way. that, especially because um, you're like solitary, right? Solitary eclectic. Mm-hmm. So I think yeah, it's cool so because different types of witchcraft. Yeah, yeah. and be you can be like solitary, which means like you're not in a coven, and you can just kind of be 
on like in a way an online coven where like you can share your experiences with other people which is really cool but still be like practicing by yourself exactly which is, and like with your own rules and your own things and exactly you could share that with others which is nice yeah and i feel like you know all in all the universe like brings me people that right. i would connect with most right. yeah, definitely. so that's why i don't ever like reach out or like, right. search is, for a coven to be in your life is very coincidental it is. It's funny because growing up, my dad always said there's no such thing as a coincidence. Well, there is for Kiko. It's, no, it's true. Coincidence. What is it? Coincidence is a word that was made up by someone who doesn't believe in the universe's plan. I think. Oh, oh wow. Wow. Think, okay. So that was a good some knowledge book. on this. Dead ass. I, I wrote that in one of my scripts for Salvage. I don't know if I, I love that. where that came from, but this is your second time on the podcast. This I, is my second time. But the on first the time. You were just like a bystander. Yeah. Yeah. I it was just came over that yeah, day. <laughs> months ago. Wow, that was a really long time ago. Maybe yeah. a year ago? It, it might have been a year ago. Was it a year ago? It, it might, might have been, been pushed in a year ago. Yeah. But, wow. uh, well, welcome back. And I'm glad Thank you, you. got to have a lot more input this time. It's not so, like, uh, last minute. But for those of y'all who care, who probably don't give a fuck, <laughs> let's talk about how we all met. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think we all kind of met in someone's dorm room in 2011. Yeah, I don't think the the way is very clear because I think I met, I already knew Kiko. Yeah. And I think at that point we lived together already. I think. Or maybe so. Yes, we did. Li- oh my God. We did <laughs> live together at the time. And then I met Kiko before I met Sarah. Well, no, no, no. I got close with Kiko before I got close with Sarah because you were never around. Sarah no, was never that, around. Yeah. That's why it was weird to me. Where was I? You were at the other building with oh, what's whoever's yeah. face. You were always at the other building. M- m- okay, Sarah would sneak in this other building in a fucking suitcase. Oh my she god! She would con- <laughs> contortion ass bitch. I remember bitch would that get in, the in a suitcase, guys. I'm small as shit. <laughs> People like a- used to do that all the time at our dorms. Like what? It wasn't even like, that serious. Like ham- hampers, <laughs> hampers, suitcases, uh, fucking carts, anything you could think of to put someone in. Yeah, yeah. That's coffins. A good idea. Coffins, that's non conspicuous <laughs> at all. Um, but I think the one day uh, Nicki Minaj came to Philly and Kiko and I waited in line together for mm-hmm. nine hours. And that was the day that I want to say I like fully became friends with Sarah because we ended up, you went to class the whole yeah. day and then we all met back at someone's dorm. And that's like the first time we hung out, hung out. And then that was that from there. Yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. Yes. Okay, but y'all didn't come here for uh stories about people you we don't came, know. We came <laughs> right. here to reminisce. Well, people came <laughs> here to to listen to ghost stories. That's true. And Kiko, Turn on the spook. Kiko's Turn on the spook. got a couple. Um can we start at your childhood? That's a good place to start, I feel. Yeah. So, uh my my childhood, so I grew up in a really old, like three story Victorian house. What color was it? In Jersey. It was Hunter Green. I love. And it's funny because that's my favorite color. Yes, favorite. It makes me feel at home. But anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, don't want to get poetic on y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but so I grew up in this really old um, three story Victorian. And uh, so there was always like a weird energy in that house. And I feel like that comes with any old victorian house kind of like your house now yeah Ooh, i went girl. in there with any without anybody last night and it was dark and i was shook Ooh, we i will. threw the bags down and i ran out we will get to that <laughs> but um do you know when the house was built uh i remember looking it up in high school and when i was in high school i think it came to be like 125 years or oh, so damn. okay yeah but so fairly old but So there was this one instance where I was like at the age of seven, I believe, and I was going up a stairwell from my second floor to the third floor, but the stairwell had a landing that we had like a bench and like a portrait hanging. Right. Um... So (laughs) I was like going up the stairwell and I stopped on the landing for whatever reason. And I'm looking into the portrait, like the reflection in the glass. And I see a woman in white, like cross by like the doorway behind you behind me. Yes. Sounds creepy. A woman in white, a woman in white. And it's so crazy because I was talking to my sister's best friend 
earlier today. Oh, wow. And uh, she was saying she, there was always like a residual energy that she felt in the house, but she didn't experience anything uh, super serious. But I told her about my experience with this woman and she was like, I didn't tell her what she was wearing. I just said a woman in white. And she was like, was she wearing a gown? And I was like, oh shit. <laughs> Oh God! And the story yes, right. <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah. And then she asked if it was an old woman, but I like can't remember from that right. long ago. And there's like no way it was like your mom or sister. No, it was a white woman. Oh. Oh. I, I thought <laughs> I thought it was, was just a woman like in a white. Brown woman. No, it was a white woman. Oh, that's scary. Yeah, and it was like a. Not a wedding gown. But like it a, a longer. It was like, you know, like how back frock. in the day, their robes were right. still very eccentric. Oh. Right. So, so it was similar to that. Did you turn around? No. Oh, fuck no, I, I wouldn't either. <laughs> I was like heading up turn to the third around. floor. And I like, I got so spooked. I was just like, dang, got a blast. <laughs> oh, I would too. I would like shut off lights and literally book it up flights of stairs yeah, like dude. i just can like... especially when there's like an abyss so it's like it's right. there's it's a like... difference between having like a one bedroom apartment and it's like very familiar and there the abyss is small but like growing up in a three-story house where the abyss is like floors <laughs> that you can like look down to it's oh like, yes no. too Elegant, much elaborate yeah did you, like, have anything happen before that? Or did you have any, like, weird situations happen prior to that? So uh, the topic of dreaming also came up when I was talking to my sister's best friend uh, because I used to have a lot of, like, reoccurring nightmares when I was younger. Um, and so there was one nightmare that I had where it was, like, sleep paralysis. I basically was having a nightmare, woke up, from the nightmare but was still dreaming but i thought i woke up because it was exactly how my bedroom was set up so like when i was a child yeah (laughs) Yeah, like inception (laughs) exactly that yeah i don't understand that movie but that's besides the point (laughs) (laughs) um but yeah so it was really crazy. I like woke up and then I ended up realizing like my conscious self realized that I was still dreaming. Like something felt off, literally like Inception. Like yeah. you just like, you just ha- yeah, you <laughs> you have like your totem to right. realize yeah. what's off about it. And so how my bedroom was set up at the time, my bed was like facing uh, like a dresser. It was like an antique dresser that my mom had found at some thrift store somewhere, but it had a pull down drawer. And so when you go to pull down the drawer, it's just books. It's just like random books that I had in there. But in my dream, the drawer like fell open and it was like (laughs) this crazy portal that had like it was like a grassy knoll and trees and like the wind. I remember like very vividly. It was it looked like it was like another country and i remember the wind blowing and it being like it felt really warm it's like some core line meets like (laughs) alice in wonderland yeah when she's like looking through the keyhole at the end yes but i just got out of this nightmare so i'm like freaked the fuck out and i don't want to deal with this right now and as i'm like as i'm realizing that this dream is still going on and it's still a nightmare i start to hear a voice start like laughing at me i'm out well was it like a deep like man's voice like what did it sound like very deep and it was it like a male or female it was definitely more masculine and it's funny because i was talking to my sister's best friend and she asked me if it was feminine because i guess she had gone through something similar um but no it was more like a man's voice okay so there's two ghosts in your house all right okay point. but this is coming within a dream but it was enough that you had this at seven and you're remembering it now at 25 right yeah exactly okay so do you think possibly <laughs> that the drawer was haunted or do you think it had anything to do with the drawer at all just because it was in your dream i don't, I know. don't think so only because i had it been experiencing like weird things related to dreams prior Prior. to that okay so this is something that i hadn't mentioned before but i did have a reoccurring nightmare that was like the nightmare like i feel like i don't know when you're a kid you (laughs) do have right it was the (laughs) one i yeah I. (laughs) and it happened 
like actually really crazily often, like maybe three times, four times a week I had this dream. So this nightmare happened at definitely started around six, seven years old and happened until I was about 16. And then, okay. Also, I know this, but I kind of around the age of seven. Yeah, it's what always... What was going on in your life? I don't honestly don't remember. That, I remember, though, it was... So, I was born in 93. If I'm seven years old, what year is it? Oh, I don't 2000. know. 2000. 2000. So, it was like, okay. So, just coming out of the 90s, it was like when the craft had come out and like whatever. But my sister was also very spiritual. Uh, okay. And the craft obviously had an influence on everybody in the 90s. But yeah. my sister was spiritual regardless. And so uh, her and her best friend would practice, like, witchcraft and, like, you know, whatever. Specifically around that age, I think, is when it started happening, when she started, like, reading tarot cards. And I would, like, go with her when I was younger to, like, crystal shops and, like, whatever, because she had to watch me. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's the only thing I can think of happening around that age. Otherwise, yeah, that's what I was getting at. Was yeah, yeah, it was definitely my sister practicing. Um, So when uh, I was, I don't know what I was talking about. Your recurring nightmare. My recurring nightmare. Yes. So second floor is where we lived in this Victorian home. Me and my sister. That's where our rooms were. My room, like if you were going up the stairs from the first floor. My room was to your right and my sister's was to the left of the stairs. So in my dream, I'm like coming from my room across the hall to go to her room and it's completely dark and she's not home. No one's home. And I go to go into her room knowing I'm not supposed to because I was like that pesky little sister. Like I I wasn't supposed to go in my sister's room like at all. Um, You were going to steal her stuff. Yeah, it was prohibited. (laughs) So I like go into her room when she's not around and she has this altar set up. And in the middle of the altar, there's this big like reptilian like serpent egg. Oh, The first time I ever had the dream, I like go up to this altar and I'm like checking out the egg and I touch it and it starts to hatch. And it, like, hatches into this crazy T-Rex. Like, really, like, so fucking vivid and realistic. Like, it was fucking insane. And it terrorized me throughout my whole house. And, like, I ended up in the dream, like, running across the street to my best friend's house and hiding in her closet. And, like, no matter where I went, this T-Rex would find me. And I had this dream so often that I started, like, building a landscape and like conscious so this is how i figured out how to lucid dream like at such an early age you have my attention yeah (laughs) (laughs) so this is how i figured it all out and i didn't know what it was i didn't know what lucid dreaming was when i was younger i just like knew that i had to figure out how to not do things and avoid things in this dream we were just talking about that it's it's hard for me to because we're recording these episodes you're hearing in october we're recording them out of order so i don't know if we even discussed it on this i think so because this is the first one and then that one no we already second. we already recorded the other one so i don't know what but basically i used to lucid dream as a child too but oh but i didn't know it was a thing a yeah dream. yeah that's how i like learned how to lucid dream at an early age because i started figuring out like okay whenever i touch the egg it hatches so next dream would come around and i wouldn't touch it it would still hatch <gasps> nope and then right. that's I, so that's so okay question do you have like a fear of dinosaurs like did you freak out at jurassic park it's funny because of that dream i didn't watch jurassic park until i was like 15 16 <laughs> it, that's very very interesting i like it was terrified of dinosaurs there was one time at summer camp they put jurassic park on and i made myself fall asleep because i couldn't watch it <laughs> good night <laughs> i like could not watch it <laughs> System shutting down. (laughs) Yeah. And like my landscape would build. So I realized, okay, I'm always running across the street to my best friend's house. So let me go somewhere else. So my brain like made up a map of like what I could remember from my surroundings. And I let, I like ended up making a landscape up until like the next town over. That's fucking nuts. Yeah. At like seven years old. Yeah. Dude, that shit's crazy. And it's funny because I brought this dream up to my sister's best friend 
And she mentioned that they wouldn't start practicing until I went to sleep. Wow. And so she thinks that some of the energy <gasps> from that was, was affecting in- me when I was sleeping. Wow. Leaking into your room. Yeah. That is so crazy. And she was like, I'm going to look it up. But like, I'm pretty sure that's like what, what? was happening. Because yeah. it was always when I was dreaming. And um, yeah, so she thinks that. Some of the energy was like leaking into your room while you were asleep. Yeah, that's amazing. That's scary though. I've been like, you know, that's the same dream for however long. But my oh, and that's what I was going to say. Okay, okay. so here we are. So she started asking me questions about it, and she was like, "Well, did because hold on, wait, wait, this what you're about to talk? This happened today." Yeah, this all okay. is happening today. Okay. So um, she's asking me questions about it. And uh, this is after she mentions that they would practice while I was sleeping. Oh, right. She was like, well, did the dreams lessen at all when I moved away? Because we weren't like practicing, ha- while you were practicing asleep. and like we didn't have a circle anymore. And I was like, they did lessen a little bit when you moved away. But they actually, I didn't realize this until today. They actually started to spread out. When my sister moved away and like moved away to like college in Brooklyn and wasn't living in the house. You had them less frequently. Yeah. I started having the dreams be more spread out. So it was happening like I was having this nightmare almost every fucking day when I was younger. And like when they were hanging out all the time and like in the house. And so as she moved away and my sister was going to college, the dreams started happening less and less. And to the point where I started not having them for years like i think it was a span of maybe five years and then i didn't have the dream until i was like 16 um so okay so my sister's best friend was saying specifically that she felt a brunette lady um and she felt that she saw her at the top of the stairs i guess around where i saw someone and then she said, an elderly woman in a dressing gown, a shorter man in the kitchen area, and then she felt like my dad's third floor office was like a nursery and playroom. But she was like, it could have been because we used to play up there. Like, right. that. that's why. Damn, she's feeling um, a whole damn force field of yes, spirits. Yes, right. Nervous. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. And she was saying, uh, the door to our yard in the basement always felt like you had to rush to get in and out. And, mm-hmm. like, I always felt that way. Yeah, because fuck a basement. Right. Yeah, fuck a true. basement. But, like, also, the way my basement was set up, it was, like, you go downstairs and then landing, door, backyard, and then you go downstairs to, like, the, the basement. basement. And, I don't know, the basement was kind of spooky, but having that door be right there to the kitchen, Mm-mm. I feel like you wouldn't feel any yeah. type of weird but it was specifically right there that was just like right i don't know Ooh, weird yeah. you're like in a weird limbo I don't want to stay okay <laughs> so so the next house that you lived in that that you felt weird shit about was like kind of close to where we're recording when you lived yeah so i used to live around the corner from sarah Yay. um and so yeah that house was really strange but it wasn't necessarily the house itself i mean it was an old building philly's filled with old buildings but i didn't necessarily feel any type of energy there however however you may have had a visitor i did yeah i definitely had a visitor a few a two visitors so there was one time when i was like sleeping i wasn't actually sleeping no i was just laying in my bed actually trying to fall asleep. I remember having a really fucking hard time falling asleep. And at this time, my bed is facing the door. And I like read somewhere that you're not supposed yeah, to have your... Yeah, bad juju or something? It's like bad juju to have your bed facing the door because uh, they say like spirits will pull you by your feet out of your bed. Well, somebody but fucking anyway. pull me by my feet because I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever see that? Uh, I guess that mean. I guess... <laughs> That meme where it's like, um, I used to be scared to like put my feet out on the bed, but now I'm like, just take me, demons. Just <laughs> take me. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but for real. Um, <laughs> I was laying in my bed trying to go to sleep, and um, I remember like being woken up out of that like you know that place you go to where you're still conscious, but you're like you're on your almost way out. Yeah, like you could fall asleep. 
but someone fucks you up and like, mm. <laughs> oh, right. but, uh, so I'm laying in my bed halfway falling asleep, halfway conscious. And what pulls me back to full consciousness is I feel like a mass sit down nope. on my bed. Yeah. We actually just read like a story that was emailed to us earlier in this episode where that happened to somebody Ugh. and that happened to me and you were there. So not saying it's you. R- but- oh my God. It right. might be. It might be. Um, so the way I was sleeping at the time and how I usually sleep is like not curled up, but a little bit fetus position, just like enough so that my old bones won't ache <laughs> by the end of it. Like for real oh, though. Like, <laughs> I feel that though. So like right in the nook of my like knee and thigh is where I felt the mass sit, sit down. Sit down. And then I felt a hand like way down on my thigh nope and this was like so i'm not facing where this is happening obviously okay it's yeah. happening like Ooh. behind me so i'm like curled up like okay cool <laughs> this is fine but, okay wait wait. what's your like what are you feeling is it like threatening are you scared? no it's not threatening it's just like out of the ordinary and it's something you don't experience well for me i don't experience it every day i mean i've had instances right but, but when it happens it's like a, what what Right, exactly. Like what? Um, I'm uncomfortable. Yeah, that's exactly the word. It's just like I'm uncomfortable, but I'm not scared. But the kicker, here's the kicker, is what really pulls me out of consciousness is I hear a voice say, good job, Kiko. And that's why I don't feel like it was anything malicious or I always strange. felt weird in your room, though. Like I'd find myself running to turn the light on because I didn't want to be there in the dark. Really? Yes, but I'm like also like I won't even go to the bathroom by myself in your new house, so maybe it's just me. Well, that's the thing. It's like my room did have that like energy, and I don't know if it was the way it was set up or that I had my altar in there or what. But... That's true. Okay, but hold on, rewind. Good job, Kiko. What were you doing? Like, what was going on in your life at that time? I think I was like going through a transition, and like I don't know. I'm I don't know. I've been focusing on my shop and like. I don't do know. What she wants. So right, you, exactly. Doing you, me. Yeah, exactly. What or who do you feel like the energy was? My pop pop. Nice. Oh, pop pop. I feel like I've always had experiences uh, as far as spiritual energy with my mama because I never met her. So, like she died of breast cancer before okay. I got to meet her. But I was pretty close with my pop pop. I was like at his house pretty often when I was little and I had never experienced him in a spiritual sense until that point. And it was ever since I like went home really randomly and I got some pictures, some old pictures from my mom and one of them's of my pop up when he was younger and I put it on my altar. Oh, okay. was it on your altar at that time? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I feel like it was him. That's nice. Hey, Pop Pop, if you're Hi. listening to this from the other side, please subscribe, tell your ghost <laughs> friends, and give us five stars yes, on, please. on iTunes. Apple. Yes, Pop listen. Spooky, spooky tunes Pop. Or spooky whatever. Tunes. probably Pop like there. rolling his eyes. Right. Like, oh. <laughs> it's like, fuck these people. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. And then in my next situation, it happened in my bedroom again uh, at this house that we're speaking about now. And it was like, so I had this situation where I was being approached by a deity at the time. And like my friend had gone to New Orleans and she's like a popular deity when it comes to like voodoo and just like uh, African witchcraft and mm-hmm. cultures. So she brought me back a candle from New Orleans and I'm like, oh, OK, great. Like, cool. Like, this is amazing. Thank you so much because she knows like how much it means to me. Um, So I put the candle on my altar. This is like the first night that I have it on my altar. Uh, My cat, Dee, shout out to her. I love her so much. She's an avid listener of our podcast. Yes. (laughs) She is. Give us Um, (laughs) five paws on Apple. Love that. But uh, so she's acting really strangely, but in a way where she's acting more loving than she normally does. So I'm like, okay, cool. Like, yes, love me up. (laughs) So she's like sitting on my bed and like going to sleep with me, which she doesn't normally do. And she is like acting strangely as in like she's jumping from side to side of my body. 
And like my bed is in a different position now. I like rearranged my room. Um, and there's a mirror on the right side of my bed that is facing my altar. So you can see my altar in the mirror's reflection. Right. And I find her like staring at the mirror, looking at my altar. Through the mirror. Through the mirror. Oh, and at this point, um, she's acting so strangely that it's making me feel off put. Like there yeah. it oh, feels no. like there's an energy. Oh, it like it didn't even feel like there was an energy in my room. It felt like someone was in my room. Wow. Like it felt like somebody Powerful. was there. I was like, okay. So I couldn't fall asleep. So I'm just like there laying in bed trying to convince myself that, that it's okay to fall asleep yeah. and ignoring D acting really fucking weird. Right. But she's jumping from side to side. <laughs> she's hopping off of the bed. And whenever I find her hopping off the bed, I'm like, okay, she's going to leave and go play in the living room. And I'll like lean over and she's laying in front of my altar, staring at the altar. Like there was one point where she finally jumped down and I was like, this is it. She's going to leave my room and go do her thing. And she is dead ass like sitting directly in front of my altar staring at it and i'm like okay this is uncomfortable like, okay, what right. the fuck <laughs> I, I wonder if she saw something in like because i know animals like dogs yeah. and cats especially, especially can, cats. can yeah sense these things but well, cats can see different frequencies like different levels of you just told us that and i i literally didn't know that yeah i didn't know that either i had to look it up after this all happened is like cats see like different wavelengths that's weird of energy so that's, that's why i think she was right. well, freaking I was, out i was also gonna say i think it's interesting that the first possibly the first time she's i don't know but like that it was in the mirror because you know people like uh in the craft it's like you use like a black mirror yeah um as like divination so like you're seeing something in the okay i, just, I don't know like just yeah just my cat is on some other shit she's uh -huh. definitely a witch in her previous life i feel Ew. like that's why we connect so well but um so that happens the first night Second day, uh, I have the candle still on my altar. I'm like texting my friend about what's going on. And uh, what initially makes me text her is like D goes into my room and I'm sitting out into the living room. And I think she's just going into my room to go use the bathroom because there's my bathroom is in my room. Right. And so I'm like, OK, she's just going to use the litter box, but she's taking a really long time and I don't hear her use the box. Yeah. Like I don't hear her scratch. So I'm like, OK, what is she doing? <laughs> like, come love me. So I go into my room and she's sitting in front of my altar again. And this is daylight. It's not dark anymore. Doppelganger. It's daylight. <laughs> right. And she's staring at my altar again to the point where I take a picture of her. I'm like, OK, like this is a lot. And I send it to my friend and I'm telling her about my experience. And she was like, oh, you know, like I forgot to mention oh, that Just this diety, <laughs> this diety likes her offerings on the floor. Oh. And so I was like, and OK, well, that explains. I had it on my altar the whole time, but the candle wasn't lit. I didn't light it yet. It right, was just it was sitting just on my there. altar. So yeah, I put it on the floor and then energies like calm down after oh, that. Wow. Yeah. But like the first day I had it on my altar and like still Oof. had it there. Shit was like popping off and D could see that. Right. She was like, this energy is, I'm fucked up on this right. energy. Uh, <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. It was really, really crazy. It was a crazy experience. Interesting. Mm hmm. So is that all that was going down at that house? Yeah, that's all that happened at that house that I can recall. And now I'm making big moves. I've moved to like three different places in yes, the matter but of the this year. one is the one. Yeah. So I just moved into a new house that the previous owner, it was just like a cute little family. They were there for seven years. But the people who were there before them, it was an elderly couple who was there for 50 years. Like, they probably were the first people to ever live in that house. And I'm not sure if they died there. I'm not sure. No, they could not have been the first people to live in that house. Your, your house now is old. That's it is real. Like, I that feel neighborhood. Real. Yeah, the Philadelphia ne is old. So... I I don't think they were the first people there. Definitely not. And fifty years is a long time. It's but like, a long time, but your house is older, older than, that. than that. Yeah, yeah. It has, and to it's be. in like old Kensington. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> nope. It's nope, old. I'm shit. shutting you down. <laughs> but, okay. No, but I get what you're saying. Is that yeah, they were there? So, they had their roots planted for over fifty for years. for a very long so there time. Could be anything there? Yeah, and nothing has changed in the house. Like the family that I did. Uh, like, I just started renting from them. Um, they, like, added a, a few modern things, like track lighting. 
<laughs> like love they didn't love yeah that. they didn't love do the anything serious light. um but like the kitchen is still wood paneling right. like the lamps are original everything is like but it's same. in everything's in good working condition yes everything yeah um, oh everything's God, amazing the office is also all wood yeah all wood like shelving i have glass displays yeah i'm like that this is literally for shit. an like elderly couple <laughs> Like what am little, I displaying on glass? <laughs> put your tchotchkes in there. Exactly. <laughs> Hang up your underwear. Sign them. They'll be famous. <laughs> but yeah, so my house is really old. It it never had like a weird energy. Like first time Dee ever stepped into it when we first were like moving everything in, she adapted very quickly. Like yeah. multiple people witnessed her adapt to this house like, <laughs> like yep, this very warmly. Right. She was like not crying in the sense where she was scared, but crying like she was communicating to me, like kind of like asking me questions like, where the fuck am I? Right. <laughs> but like walking around and purring and just like, Checking you know, looking out. around, okay. whatever. So it was a warm energy in the house. And like for people to have lived there for 50 years and then for another family to have lived there for seven years, it's an energy that like makes people want to stay. It's not like, yeah, it is warm, you know, get out. <laughs> um, so yet. Y- yet. <laughs> you can't talk. I know. I live in a haunted ass house. Literally. <laughs> Who am that I? You brought upon. <laughs> right. Every house. Every time. Any huevos. <laughs> that you brought upon. So, I mean, like, there's an energy there for sure, but it's not... Threatening. Threatening to me. It's still very new, so the energy is off-putting. Like, I find myself, like, if I'm sitting in my living room... Uh, my couch is facing the windows. And so behind the couch is just empty space. It's like a dining room space and then the kitchen. So if I'm watching TV in my living room, it's just completely dark behind me. So I feel something. And it might just be because it's dark. Right. I don't know. But I do feel something there uh, when I'm just like, alone in my house and just has has well i mean you've only lived in this house for like what a month now two months yeah i guess it has been a month now yeah so it's not it's not been too too long but um has anything happened that's weird yeah besides a feeling yeah so uh, there is one instance where it was the third night of me being there and i had a friend come over and she was like helping me unpack and just like keeping me company whatever um and she decides to stay the night and she asks me to leave the light on because obviously it's a scary house. Right. Like, so everyone knows it's a two bedroom house, like to myself, like no one else is living there. There's no roommates. Like it's, it's right. pretty scary. It's a scary situation <laughs> living on your own. Um, so I go upstairs to go to sleep and I leave the light on for her. Um, and I wake up really randomly at like five thirty. like my alarm goes off because I forgot to set it to a reasonable time. <laughs> after moving and all right. of those other things I had to do that week. Um, so I'm like, okay, cool. Like whatever I have to pee and I'm going to go downstairs and turn the light off. <laughs> and so after I get out of the bathroom, I go downstairs to go pee and I see my friend sitting up on the couch, like upright. She's not sleeping. And I'm like, okay, why is she awake right now? What's going on? Um, and so I go downstairs and I'm like, oh, you know, like I was just coming up to turn off the light because I thought you would be asleep. And she was like, well, I haven't been awake for long. I was actually having a dream where I was in your house, the house we're in currently. And I was laying in your or I was laying on your couch and there was a brown woman like talking to me like she was looking down at me say like if she's laying on the couch like where the coffee table was like in between the coffee table and the couch right just standing right in front of that couch. yeah just like standing over her okay don't stand over me please. (laughs) (laughs) standing over her and talking to her and i guess they were having a conversation and she couldn't recall what they were talking about but when she woke up my cat was standing in the same place the woman was standing and was staring directly at her oop right okay all right what did she say did she did she say it was like a threatening? No, oh. no, she wasn't. Like when she was talking about it, she wasn't talking about it in a sense where it was malicious in any sense. <laughs> huh. But then she said afterwards what spooked her and why she didn't go back to sleep is my cat left that spot and then went to go sit in the chair that's directly across from the couch. And it's a chair that she it's the only chair, honestly, that she lays on. 
Right. And so she gets in the chair, doesn't lay down. She's still sitting upright and continues to stare at my friend. My cat is sitting upright on the chair and staring at my friend. And so this is where I come in and I come downstairs. All within and like what, like two minutes? Yeah, literally. Okay. And she was like, I couldn't fall back asleep because like your cat is a human being, I think. <laughs> Literally that's so though? bizarre. I wonder uh, if that's your cat from another life. How crazy! I don't would know, that be? or because you know, with the instance with my cat seeing certain energies and freaking out before, she could have just seen the shit going down and, and like, stood there the watching it. Right. <laughs> same thing. Yeah. The bystander effect. Yeah. I was in Kiko's house alone, and I was tweaking out. I'm not gonna lie. What happened? Give us the deets. <laughs> Nothing happened, but I just like you felt I just something weird. Feel something, and like. I'm used to it because I feel like I always know when there's a presence. Usually I could pick up on it, but it still scares me. Yeah. No, same. (laughs) I don't want to see anything. I don't want a story. Right. Don't show (laughs) me. (laughs) I don't want to see it. (laughs) (laughs) I feel the same way. And it's like funny because like in the daytime, you could see the reflection um, on your entertainment center. You can see it at night too, bitch. And it's scary as fuck. That's what I'm always terrified. I'm like, I don't want to see anything. Right. Please don't. When you can, like, see something behind you. Exactly. Yeah, so where my entertainment center is, it's, like, an old, like, 60s console that my TV sits on. So the uh, drawers are glass, like, sliding glass. So you can see. And so the couch is in front of that. And so if you're laying on the couch or just low on the couch, you can see in the reflection of the glass behind the couch. Right. Into don't want to be seen right. <laughs> also really quick side note we didn't touch on this and i don't really think it's necessary but i'm going to do it anyway kiko in her basement she told me she had an extra toilet in my head i thought she had an extra bathroom go oh, downstairs yeah, he was like an extra bathroom <laughs> okay but yeah but what else would you i go downstairs and there's a fucking toilet in, in like the middle of the fucking like room. literally and, just and a, a toilet sink. a yeah, toilet and a sink just out in the open just have, the necessities in this bitch have you pooped there yet no but She's my like cat's poop there. goes in there. I love well, that. Well, it's convenient. <laughs> Litter box is right next to it. Maybe I'll poop there next time I'm over. Yeah. Ew. Spooky poops. No. Yeah, Can you literally. imagine, like, say the power goes off while you're down <gasps> there? I don't, I'm not. I think I'd be fine. Oh. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and then she has that pantry. I thought it was like a Oh, pantry. yeah. So in my basement, there's this scary pantry at the, the back scary, of the basement. It sounds, yeah. it sounds so dumb, but like it really is spooky. Like you have, it's like in a little. It's like a just a door of nothing. It is, yeah. It's like and you wouldn't space. see that door just going down into that basement. I thought it was a wall. Haunted canned goods. Yeah. Don't fucking do it. Get your haunted canned goods Get here. here. <laughs> okay. All right. So what about that one time when you, the I think it was the first night you lived there that you didn't stay there. I didn't stay in this house initially. We literally, so my moving day was wake up. It was raining, cloudy as shit. Wake up, throw the shit into a house. And then I had to literally drive to Delaware to go to a wedding. Like a childhood friend was getting married. So I didn't sleep there the first night. Um, But the next day when I'm coming back from the wedding, me and my like childhood friends are, you know, they're with me. So we're carrying things into the house and my house is completely covered in caterpillars. Like, I've seen this house twice before I moved in, including my move-in date. Actually, that makes it three times. It's never been, like, I don't know where these caterpillars came from, right. but they were there. Um, and it was, like, to the point where, like, caterpillars were falling off of the structure of my house. Like, like there was trails of them leading up to the house, like, to the point where it was so serious, I had to take a video of it. <laughs> Were they like on your neighbors or just your No, house? it was just my house. Like, it was so serious. My best friend was like, Kiko, it's you. Yeah. She was like, it's you. Do um, caterpillars have any type of like significance to you? Or did you like look it up after this happened? So, I mean, caterpillars themselves will mean like metamorphosis, like change. Like oh, big change okay. is yeah, happening. Um, and... There was one caterpillar when I first saw the house and I first met my landlord, like, for the very first time. Um, There was a big, like, black caterpillar in my backyard. And it's funny that you asked me about the significance of caterpillars because uh, my mom used to tell me and my sister this story when we were younger about how a black butterfly landed on my grandmother's coffin 
the day of the funeral. Oh, wow. And so growing up, I've always associated black butterflies with, with my grandmother. Grandma. Yeah. And like literally it's a thing in my family. Like my mom will say hello to her mom and or tell me and my sister to tell to say hello to my right. grandmother uh, whenever we see a butterfly. So it's just funny that I move into this house and it's cut and or, covered in <laughs> little caterpillars. So really quick um just was at my cousin's wedding and unfortunately her dad passed away about two years ago Mm -hmm. um so she was getting married and the place that the reception was at was at like a ski lodge so it's like probably 20 plus feet way higher maybe like a 30 foot fucking ceiling like it goes up there and it's all like uh glass So I'm sitting and this was right after she had, she had, um, the, she danced with her brother. Mm -hmm. Um, so right after that, it was like emotional. And I, I, my brother was talking to me and I look over to the window and on the very, very, very top right of the window, there was a dragonfly. Now something about dragonflies. I don't really see many dragonflies in my life. However, my aunt, which is, um, my cousin's mom, obviously Mm -hmm. who was getting married, she has a huge thing with like huge thing with dragonflies and they mean a lot to her and ever since her husband passed away i guess you know when you see dragonflies it means something mm-hmm. so i literally dipped out on my brother's conversation like mid sentence and i went <laughs> i gotta go gotta go gotta, go, gotta blast <laughs> And I pointed it out to my aunt and she got like emotional because how, how I haven't seen a dragonfly all summer. Right. And, and yeah. And it was at her wedding during the, where, what should have been the father daughter dance. That's so cool. And, um, yeah. So then she grabbed my cousin Julie and was like, and showed her. So, so yeah, I think that's interesting that a lot of the times it's either like animals or I feel like insects mostly. Like yeah, I sure want to say my grandma comes to me in like little uh ladybugs yeah i feel that's I so also strange have a because story about ladybugs which is really crazy. Wh- who comes to you in ladybugs um so my friend um passed away she was in a car accident and um she had a ladybug tattooed on her uh-huh. so anytime i would see a ladybug i would oh, you think, think it was of her. her yeah that's cute that's Aww, sweet that cute. so it's sometimes the ghosts aren't always scary sometimes no. it's just like hey bitch you're doing good and i'm here what's good what's right. good and i do find that spirits always take form of insect rather than which is an- interesting like actual animal yeah i found that it's either that or like a certain bird because i know like blue jays so sometimes come at really f- and honestly i want to say Blue Jays have come to my mom and Cardinals at really fucking weird times when... Cardinals are a good luck sign. Oh, yeah, nice. but it, it'll be like when something's fucking happening. Yeah. Or like someone just passed away like that yeah. day. And it's just like, I haven't seen a Cardinal they around also these say Cardinals are, yeah, yeah, symbols of like spirits or... Uh, anyway, but yeah, I think that's <laughs> that's interesting. Um, But wait, that was... Wait, there's more. That wasn't... <laughs> the, how about the, the black butterfly? So yeah, um... I've been, yeah, I've been surrounded by black butterflies since I was really, really young, especially uh, at the house, the Victorian house that we used to live in. Um, So when I was younger, I saw them pretty often. Um, And I still see them like we since moved from that house, my family, and I saw them at the new house for a little while. Um, And then I stopped seeing them for a short time. It was like I was living back at home in New Jersey. <clears throat> and uh, I stopped seeing them, like, in the transition of me moving to Philadelphia. I hadn't seen them in a really long time. Um, and recently, I went to New Orleans in July for my 25th birthday. And I was, like, thinking to myself, like, damn, like, you know, like, I miss my grandma. I'm, like, I haven't seen her in a really long time. Because the last time I had talked to her and seen a black butterfly maybe was two to three years prior. I was, like, sitting in my backyard of my parents' house. And uh, that was at, like, a really transitional time. And so I chose to go to New Orleans for my 25th birthday because I felt like 25 is, like, a really transitional age. Right. So, you know, New Orleans is, like, a hub for witches and spirituality and energy and just, like, a great time and an amazing city in general. So, like, why not? And the French Quarter. And alcohol. (laughs) Yeah. Drive through daiquiri places. Street. <laughs> drive through daiquiri. Riddle me that. Like, dri- how do they drive have that? Drive through daiquiri. Oh, I know. I went to one. I just still so don't get it. So crazy. It was crazy because I was going thrifting. The Lyft driver was explaining how the drive through daiquiri places work and how, like, we asked her, like, 
so what happens like if you see a cop and she just as you go through you get your stuff and then if you see a cop you just duck oh right? my god well <laughs> anyway i was like not... amazing this culture is beautiful <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so uh we were staying in uh, uh where are we staying i can't remember the area but it was like right out- right outside of the french quarter like seven minute drive 20 minute walk um, and how New Orleans houses work is like everybody has a roof you can just like sit on for the most part. Um, so our Airbnb had this really great roof and we had just got back from doing something around the city. So we were just like chilling and smoking and just like relaxing and enjoying the day and the weather. And, um, as I'm like talking to my friend, I see a black butterfly fly past and it's huge it's so so big and i'm like oh my god like and i explained to her i'm like it's my grandmother and it's the fourth of july and this is really significant because uh my birthday is on the fifth and my birthday has always been associated with the fourth of july just because it's the day after the fucking holiday so my cakes were always red, white, and blue, and hey. the fireworks were always just like for a symbol you of only. right. Exactly, oh, they're just for, for me. <laughs> so it's the Fourth of July, and we're chilling on this roof, and I see this black butterfly, and it means a lot to me because I'm like, oh, it's my my mom finally like presenting herself after you know a long hiatus of like right. working for me on the sidelines, and she's saying, <laughs> <laughs> "Happy birthday, bitch!" Yes, happy birthday, saying happy birthday to me. Um, and then I go to stand up. And the butterfly, like, circles around and almost flies directly into my face. Wow. Like, so, so close. And it was great because I'm happy that I had a friend there to, like, right, witness, to witness all it. of right. this happening. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. And it's funny. I had an instance the other day. I was thrifting again. And uh, me and my friend are driving in a car. It's, like, out in New Jersey. And uh, we're driving around. And I'm, like, about to pull up on the thrift store. And I... <laughs> I say to myself in my head and then I say it out loud. I'm like, I'm going to find a parking spot like right in front of this thrift store. And I don't expect to actually find it. I'm like, let's just manifest this. This is what I say to my friend. I'm like, let's just manifest this like parking parking spot in front of this store. Um, And we ride past and there's a parking spot right there. So I go to turn around, obviously, so I can try and get it. And as I go to turn around, a butterfly is like in front of my car oh, like yes. like leading the way to the parking spot it's so crazy wow that's cr- and <laughs> I, we, and she knows my friend knows about the story of my uh, right. grandmother and the and, and the, the butterfly. butterfly but you and i were just talking on our way over here that um uh, uh, last thursday i had to go to the city <clears throat> mm-hmm. to a street that has no parking so basically i was prepared to pay like 30 fucking dollars for a goddamn parking garage but i go there and i literally and i've done this and honestly you at home hey you there listening just really focus and think about the fact that there will be a parking spot so easily accessible to you because i thought about it and i was just like I didn't even have doubts about it mm-hmm. when I was driving. I was like, no, it's going to be there. Because, I mean, what worst comes to worst, I just park in a parking garage, but right. I'm not trying to do that. But this so I'm, gonna I'm be thinking there. of it, and I pull on, um, I was on uh, Chestnut. Yeah. And there, no parking, never in Center City. Absolutely Literally freaking not. Ever. And it was on a busy, it was like Thirsty Thursday. People were out, and I turn the corner, and right there, like maybe a block and a half away from the building that I need to be at, there are two open parking spots. So I, I didn't even have to yeah. parallel park. I pulled that yes, shit in. Yes, pull right in. And also, there was one other instance when I was going, I was working at Lush, and we had a thing. It was called The Road Show, and it was also in Philly. It was like right outside of uh, Chinatown. And we had to go there and it was basically like, um, you just had good luck finding parking, Mm -hmm. like good, good luck. So I'm driving there, I'm by myself and I know that I'm going to be there for hours. So it's really hard to find parking that's more than two hours. And I had to be there for like a full day um, because basically they run you through the new soaps and the products and you have to learn about shit. So it's a very long, long like process. So I'm thinking, I'm like, there's going to be a parking spot. It's going to be like one of the first parking spots I see. It's going to be so fucking easy to get. And then as I'm driving, for some reason, I ha- I'm i just like, I'm hungry. But I really, really could go for a fucking apple. And I don't know why, because I'm never like, ooh, I crave an apple. Like, <laughs> sure, a double Whopper Junior. Like, okay. But just kidding, I'm a vegetarian. But <laughs> but um, for some reason, I really have this like urge for an apple. And I am I get to Chinatown and um, I pull into this little lot that um, 
it was like super cheap parking and the dude was like uh he was like it's probably full and i was like well how do you fucking not know how many people are in here but he's like well if you if you have to pull through and you come back out we like we won't charge you it's fine so i'm like okay i'll take my chances pull in first parking spot open yeah and there's a cement ledge in front of me and guess what the fuck's on the cement ledge yes a goddamn apple oh Oh, shit like i was like i took a picture of it i was i was like what the fuck did i just manifest that shit and then i found ten thousand dollars but that never seems to happen (laughs) but like dead ass you if you're listening to this try it like concentrate Concentrate on on the fact that it's not going real i pride myself right and what's the worst that'll happen it doesn't happen right Right, exactly suck my ass give it a try yeah try it out it's a new way of positive thinking exactly it's just gonna happen it's fine it it is um everything is always fine so (laughs) Do you have any more ghost stories for us? No, that's it. Okay, well, that, that was a journey. It was, but it really was. quick, I know I talked about this on this podcast before, but for those of y'all who are new or didn't listen to, I don't know what episode it was, it was a while ago. We are at my old apartment. The year is 2012. <laughs> Break it down for them. <laughs> and Kiko was over with our friend Sam. Oh my God, yeah, the story. It was Taco Tuesday and I'm sitting, kind of the way that your living room is now, my old living room was like, um, you couldn't see behind, like the couch was kind of in the middle of the room, so it was facing the TV. I was playing Xbox, so I was leaning forward, Taco Tuesday, we were not drinking, so, uh, surprisingly. <laughs> and um, and I had uh, a like a brown sheet that was over. I don't know why it was fucking brown. I had a brown sheet that was like covering my couch because the couch was disgusting. So I'm leaning forward playing my Xbox and I feel Kiko come and sit down right next to me. And I feel the the thing tug under my ass. Like I feel the, the, the sheet tighten and I feel a full body like sitting on the springs next to me and I feel a leg next to mine and I'm leaning mm-hmm. forward. And then Kiko says something from the kitchen because nobody was fucking sitting next to me. Yeah. <laughs> yep, and I freaked out, and I almost was literally on the verge of crying. Because, like, didn't, wasn't there rumors that that building was, was haunted? Haunted, because it used to be something, like I, yeah, a we, hospital or, like, a yeah, mental I, I institution. It might have been. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what it used to be, but it was. Because there's been, like, multiple experiences, I think, that people have had in but that building. We, for me, weird shit didn't happen until right should, before we left. We should find the weird shit, like start reaching out to people and make like a whole episode about it. Let's do it. Well, my cousin lives in that building now. Oh, true. I wonder talked, if she experiences yeah, anything. I'll have to ask her. Um, cool. Sometimes yeah, it takes a little bit when they redo a building That's, and yeah. it's all shiny and new. Yeah. It, it takes a little bit for it to seep in. <laughs> the spirits are like Really confused. marinate. <laughs> I'm saying. Wow. Okay. Well, we are running out of time, but we've got some questions for you. <gasps> yes. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Question numero uno. Have you ever played with a Ouija board? I haven't, and I. It's <laughs> it's funny that you asked me that because I uh, have a hard time even touching them. I have one in my car. So okay, newer like you know ones that they're making now. Cool for everyone who doesn't know because no one knows this because no one knows me on this podcast. But really? I work in like a variety store, and it's kind of like antique sales, like a lot of old furniture. Basically, every store that we have is dead people shit. Okay, and right. we got a Ouija board in one time and they're pricing that. it. They're about to put it out. And <laughs> I forget who it is on the staff, but they're like, oh, yeah, just like put the smalls out, like whatever. And the Ouija board is in the box. And I, <laughs> I had such a hard time like, like, um, picking it up. I like and it's like old, like made in Salem. Yeah, no, box I have, falling I've falling apart. One, I 100 percent have one that is handed down from someone who it was handed down to. Yeah. I and them. I like like little like pinchers mm. of my fingers Ooh. like had to like th- just throw it on any table <laughs> Doom, done. okay so that brings us to our next question so um are you superstitious i am very superstitious okay. i will not like at work actually this past week we had to get up on a ladder and like bring some lamps down because someone wanted to buy them and i refused to like go underneath the ladder i to wouldn't go get nope. other things there is superstition yeah i'm very superstitious and i'm definitely I'm not about playing with Ouija boards mostly because people love to mess with shit that they don't know anything about. True. And it's like spirituality 
is such a large platform and like people it, don't understand and it's multiple levels so it's like you're just inviting anything like if you, unless you was a priestess and like <laughs> you right. didn't know you know what i'm saying like you're just inviting any entity to right. it latch itself right. onto anything in your home but on you again like, again personally i think that the ouija boards are like a, a tool of divination. Yeah, no, and I feel like only people who intent, know, right. yeah, what they're doing and have like experience for real, for real with that should be using them. And okay. I don't, right? Yeah, yeah. You don't. You don't. I don't think them. just anybody should be mm-hmm. using a Ouija board because that's how you end up with paranormal activity. That's why they're <laughs> floating around everywhere. Right. All right. So next question: You're in a horror movie. Are you the final girl, the first to die, the comic relief, the skeptic, the smart one, or the killer? If I'm in a horror movie, I feel like I'm the one who, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I'm the one not involved in the situation. I'm like, y'all are fucked. Like y'all I'm are getting your now. shit into. And then I feel like I get brought back into, brought back into the situation later down the line. Like in the beginning, I'm like, nah, you guys are messing with some really serious shit. You don't know what you're doing. And then they're like, Kiko, help. And then I'm like, uh, I have to help these bitches. Uh, and then I end up dying because I wanted to help somebody. Okay, so, so I would say middle right before the end. Okay. <laughs> so almost the, would you, so almost the final girl or would you be the final girl? No, I wouldn't. I don't think I would be the final girl. Okay. All right. I mean, I would actually, yeah, I'm yeah, going to be the final. It. See, yeah, manifestation. That. I am the final girl. Okay. <laughs> no, I feel like some fuck shit is going to get me. That's true. <laughs> if you were given the death penalty, what would your last meal be? Oh, that's hard. I know. I don't know. I don't like that question because that's really hard. Kiko loves food. I, oh, God. Yeah. Not be, she's like upset not because she's on death row, but because, because it's like, like she food. doesn't want a one last meal. Right. I would need to have snacks. Like gotta have some snacks. <laughs> Variety. Gotta have like a few dishes <laughs> of different things. I don't know. That's a hard question. I can't answer that. I feel like yours oh. would be tacos. But no. <sighs> It like, maybe no. definitely Mexican food. Maybe I don't know. Damn, it's like, do I get home cooked or do I get like nachos? You know. Okay, well, <laughs> you you think about that because we gotta keep moving on. Okay, <laughs> so um, okay, what was your favorite Halloween costume growing up? To be honest, it's funny. I never really had one. I never got that dressed up for Halloween, which is sad. I always want to get really like out there for halloween but it doesn't really happen so i never had one we can be ketchup and mustard if you want yeah you can be whatever one's i want to be donna summer i think this year okay either donna summer or lara croft from tomb raider love that love that um would you sleep inside of a coffin for a night no i don't like close in spaces Same. perfect no follow-up questions okay <laughs> moving on chocolate candy or fruity sweet chewy candy fruity sweet chewy okay I, I, fun fact i just started eating chocolate like as of the past few years because i did not like it That's that was the worst halloween candy and it would be filled with chocolate i, love I chocolate. could eat snickers it has to be involved with something else in the mix you know <laughs> yeah. i can't just do a Oh, okay. oh, chocolate bar. Sorry, all you chocolate fans out there. Murder weapon of choice? Murder weapon of choice. Could it be any, like it has to be a realistic murder weapon of choice? Um, What is yeah. your unrealistic murder weapon of choice? I don't know. <laughs> okay, no, we need we need a weapon. It weapon. would be poison. Okay, Love wow. That. Discreet. Okay. Keep it discreet. Hocus discreet. Pocus or Halloween Town? Hocus Pocus for sure. I'm not that big of a Halloween town. Oh my god, I love Pocus. I love it, but like, I could do without it if I had to choose between them. Okay. Salem the cat or Binks the cat? Salem. He's my homie. Oh, so cute. All right. What is your favorite part of Halloween? My favorite part of Halloween is that everybody gets to be themselves. And I feel like being yourself is like being uncomfortable like stepping out of your comfort zone dressing up as something you normally wouldn't i take off my human costume i've been I'm wearing all literally the- yeah every so day. everyone gets to be like strange for a day and not i've been strange my whole be- damn life right <laughs> <laughs> but for the people who can't get out of their comfort zone so easily it's nice to see everyone like 
celebrating. That's so poetic. I yeah. love that. <laughs> uh, which horror movie, murder, or um, death did you find the most disturbing? Uh, like real, t- like a fake movie or like yeah, real- like a, from a horror movie. Yeah. Has it, have you been watching like a horror movie and been mm. like, wow, that death was fricked up? Yeah. Hmm. Damn, I don't know. I guess I haven't been shocked in a while. Ooh, I guess we'll have to shock you later. Oh, actually, Ooh. no, I do have one. There was one movie I was watching. It was more of like a thriller, though. Okay, we'll take it. Where <laughs> where this girl, um, fuck, I forget the phobia, but she has that fear of leaving the house. Um, and these guys come and rob her house, but she can't leave because of her fear yeah because of her fear of leaving um and it's super serious and uh, the plot (laughs) twist in that movie really had me kind of oh no what movie is it don't tell us the plot i can't tell you yeah i can't but but what movie is it (laughs) um it's called the intruders okay i watched that oh yeah we did watch that yeah so for some reason, when you were describing it, it reminded me of I Spit on Your Grave, which had some fucked up ways to die. Dranisha loves I Spit on Your did Grave. You, what's oh his my name? God, I know did. that. F- like, she loves that movie. What's his name from uh, Mean Girls? Um, oh, my God. What Aaron the fu- Samuels. No, the other gay guy. Oh. Aaron Samuels is gay, by the by. Um, what's his name? Damien. He was in that. Uh, and uh-huh. his death. Whew, I ain't going to tell you what it's. I'm, just go I ahead and watch that. I Spit on Your Grave. Yeah. Okay. So, um. We, we got to start wrapping it up. But before we go, favorite serial killer and why, if you have one. And by the way, favorite serial killer, you don't have it's to be like, yeah, go killers, go killers. It's funny because I was hoping you would ask me this. Right. No, 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 no. Yeah, We're no. not supporting that. No. Because there's so many. <laughs> okay. No, no. Maybe maybe favorite is the wrong thing. Um, most uh, uh, serial killer. Intriguing. Yes. Most interesting yes. serial. So there's so many that I find really interesting. Manson murders to say. Okay. One. Black Dahlia. Two. Um, but and that wasn't a serious. That was just a that was murder. just like a really interesting thing that unsolved happened. still. Nobody knows what, who did it. Yeah, and then crazy. the Zodiac Killer, I find so oh, shit. interesting. Maybe because it involved like puzzles and like yeah. you know whatever cryptid um, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. You love a good puzzle. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Make me think. <laughs> Make me think for it. <laughs> No, don't kill people. How about that? Yeah, right. Okay. So that is pretty much all the time we have. But one more time, where can people uh, find you, Kiko? So you can find me on my personal page at, at Kiko L K E I K O E L or on Nooks and Crannies. That's also through Instagram. So that's at Nooks Vintage. And again, that is K N O O K S Vintage. And then through the Afro, which I have so many handles. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Never, but my Afro never Witch- apologize. <laughs> You're hustling. Um, my Afro Witch page is also on Instagram, and that's at the Afro Witch. So yeah, follow. Awesome. Give me a follow. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Kiko, for thank being you. here. Thank you for having me. And um, thank you guys for listening. You know where to follow us. We ain't even got to tell yeah, you. Yeah, we don't but, even have to go through uh, that. If you want to support us at Patreon, at Patreon, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Patreon.com slash Esoteric Oddities. And tell a friend to listen to this because it honestly helps us out a lot. Hit uh, hit that subscribe button. Smash that like button. Honestly, wherever you listen, wherever you listen to us on podcasts uh, or wherever you listen to your podcast, look for us, subscribe. It helps helps us out a lot and it's free you ain't gotta pay a damn cent uh thank you guys so much for listening thank you guys have and, a great um, day tune in for the rest of the Bye. month of october for yes more. it's gonna get real shit. spooky Scary shit thank you guys for listening Thanks. Bye. bye, bye.